we got to rescue this country. Uh, I mean, the woke left has taken over our culture, our, our country, our media, uh, the Democrat Party, the federal government. We got to we got to stop this. My guest today is Florida Senator Rick Scott. Scott is also the chair for the National Republican Senatorial Committee. Senator, thank you so much for joining us it's today. It's always great to be with you. So, Senator, you have just released a, an 11-point plan for an American rescue to rescue the country from where we're at right now. Can you tell us a little bit more about that plan? Well, first off, you can, go, you can see it, read it at rescueamerica.com or text America to 22044. Okay. It's 11 steps and it's basically to stop the woke left. Mm -hmm. Take our country back. We gotta rescue this country. Uh, I mean, the woke left has taken over our culture, our, our country, our media, uh, the Democrat party, the federal government. We gotta, we gotta stop this. We gotta start saying that you know our kids are gonna learn this is the greatest country ever. I mean, mm -hmm. they're gonna say the Pledge of Allegiance, salute the flag. Uh, we're, not, we're gonna stop this racial politics. No one should ask your skin color or our race on a government form. We need to secure our border. We need to support our police. Uh, so I'm, I'm very focused on, you know, we got to build our economy, not the government economy. So mm -hmm. it's the basic things that I think all of us agree on. So how are we going to implement these things? It seems like President Joe Biden is not interested in any of that. He seems more interested in dividing Americans than bringing them together. So what's the plan? We're going to win. First off, we're going to win uh, both the House and the Senate this November. Um, then we're going to work really hard on passing uh, good legislation that will turn this country around. And they're going to win the White House. Uh, in 24, when we get a Republican House, Senate, and President, then it's our responsibility to actually govern and uh, implement conservative change, uh, stop borrowing more money, stop raising people's taxes, um, start you know, doing the, the things we care about, secure a border, make sure people can get a good job, make sure our kids, you, the parents have the choice of where our kids go to school, uh, make sure we support our law enforcement, things like that. I'm glad you mentioned that the, the budget is ballooning, right? Because we have so much money that's in our deficit that it's really causing issues across the country. Can you elaborate a little bit on some of those problems? Well, it's $30 trillion worth of debt. I mean, I don't know how we're ever going to pay for that. Mm. I just don't know how we're going to do it. Interest rates are going up. Um, we're already struggling. We're running big time deficits. When I became, became governor of Florida back in uh, January of 2011, I walked in with a budget deficit. We balanced the budget. Mm. In D.C., there's no focus on balance the budget. We got the step one is balance our budget, start living within our means, and then start growing our economy so fast that we have the revenues to pay down our debt. That's how we have to do it. We can't raise people's taxes. Uh, we've got to keep our taxes as low as we can. We've got to make sure uh, that we make it easier to get a permit. Now, if you're not going to get a permit, you don't get one. But if you're going to get a permit, don't make you wait two to five years to do it. Don't have regulation we don't need. The federal government is doing a lot of things they don't need. Like education, it should be a, it should be a state issue, not a federal issue. Mm. So in terms of raising taxes, the Washington Examiner recently reported that you mentioned a federal income tax and, and quote, all Americans should pay income tax to have skin in the game, even if a small amount. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? So he, here's the way I look at it. What's, here's what's going on right now. I don't, I don't want to raise anybody's taxes. Uh, I actually cut taxes and fees 100 times when I was governor. But, they're, but they're, you know, what's, what's happening right now is, is the working class in this country, is they're paying property taxes, income taxes, and sales tax. We've got billionaires. Mm. They're not paying any income tax. We've got, we got people that, that you know, want more and more and more government. They don't, want to, they don't want to work for it, and they don't want to put any, any, have any skin in the game. And that's wrong, and I'm going to fight to stop that. So you're fighting to, to make sure that people who are not paying taxes currently start to pay taxes. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure people that, 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 you know, that, you know, these billionaires and the, and this woke crowd that, that, you know, takes all this money uh, out of the federal, out of federal government. I mean, they're going to be part of the system. I don't mm -hmm. care if it's a small amount. You ought to be part of it. Absolutely. So where should the government cut spending to reduce the deficit? The government spends so much on all these programs. Where should it cut? I think what you have to do is you have to do what I did when I was governor. There's 4,000 lines of the budget in Florida. I went through every line. said, what's the purpose for this? Are we actually getting a purpose for it? And then measure it, and if we're not, get rid of it. Mm -hmm. But I would like as an example, I don't understand why we have a federal department of education. I mean, this is a state issue. Um, the states can figure out the education system in this country. The states are laboratories. They can figure this out. But the federal government is trying to take over everything. Mm -hmm. And the, the federal government needs to step back, do the, do the most important issues. When you run deficits in a business, you say, what's my core mission? Mm. Let's go back to my core mission. Their core mission is to defend the freedom of this country. Their core mission is to make sure we have a robust economy. Their core mission is not, is not, not to get involved in local programs. Uh, Florida has been touted as a model throughout the past couple of years of what a good state government would look like. What do you think about Florida is specifically so popular amongst conservatives and other Americans? 
I think I think the most important thing is it's a place where people can get a job. Mm. And you can get a job because the companies want to be here. The way you think about it, I thought about it when I was governor, is if I want more companies here, I've got to make it to where they do better financially here. So their taxes have to be lower. It has to be easier to get a permit. Um, uh, you, have to, you can't have regulation that's unnecessary. So if you do that, then one, it's a great place to get uh, to get a job. Number two, we have a lot of school choice here. We probably have the most school choice state in the country. Mm. So you, as a parent, you can choose what, you know, and you might have five kids. If you have five kids, there might be five different schools you want to send them to because it's about what's best for each child. On top of that, we support law enforcement in this state. We, when I left as governor, we had a 47-year we low in our crime rate uh, because we support law enforcement. There's no defunding the police in Florida. Mm. We like the police. Mm. And we know that, that the police are the good guys and the criminals are the bad guys. Before we wrap, I would like to get your impression on what's going on in Ukraine right now. What are your thoughts on that? Putin is a murderous thug. Uh, when you see what he's done, uh, the number of Ukrainians that have died, when you see that they're, they sent a tank just to drive over somebody in a car, you just think, who in their right mind wants to lead a, lead the movement like this? And then you want, you're proud and honored uh, for the, uh, what the Ukrainians are doing. They're standing up for democracy. They might be, between, they might be the ones that are defending democracy uh, and, and stopping you know, a next world war. Mm -hmm. Because if Putin wins here, where's he going to stop? Um, so I'm very appreciative. We've got to do everything we can, uh, give them as much weapons as we can so they can defend the free, their freedoms. Absolutely. That was Florida Senator Rick Scott. Scott is also the chair for the National Republican Senatorial Committee. Senator, very much appreciate your time. Thanks. Great to see you.